This is David Russell, Global Head of Market Strategy for TradeStation. And today we'll look at major events for investors and traders. Stocks keep climbing as inflation slows and as investors look for rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. The S&P 500 rose almost 1% between Friday, July 5th and Friday, July 12th. The index closed above 5,600 for the first time ever, one week after surpassing 5,500. 85% of its members advanced, according to TradeStation data. That could represent a broadening of gains after a period of dominance by large growth stocks like NVIDIA. Bond yields fell. Jerome Powell sounded more dovish in his testimony before the Senate Banking Committee on Tuesday. The Federal Reserve Chair said reducing interest rates too late or too little could unduly weaken economic activity and employment. He added that elevated inflation isn't the only risk. Translation, policymakers are starting to worry about weaker economic data and job growth. It was one of his clearest indications that they're getting closer to interest rate cuts. Two days later, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that the consumer price index fell one-tenth of a percent in June. The reading was two, tenths of a percentage point less than expected and the lowest reading since May 2020. Services like shelter and transportation slowed sharply. That's a potential sign of inflationary pressures easing across the economy. Last week's drop in borrowing costs drew money into groups that benefit from lower interest rates that included real estate investment trusts, housing, and utilities. Solar energy stocks, banks, and biotechnology also rallied. Enphase Energy led the S and P 500 and had its biggest weekly gain in almost two years. Some of the move followed bullish commentary by Goldman Sachs. Corning leaped after raising its sales guidance. The fiber optic company said AI is fueling data center demand for its networking gear. Housing related names were other big gainers in the S and P 500, like Builders First Source, Mohawk Industries, and D. or Horton. Chipotle Mexican Grill was the worst performer after completing a big stock split. Meta Platforms and Netflix also lagged. Meta slid as money left mega caps, and Edgewater Research cited a potential advertising slowdown. Wells Fargo declined after earnings matched expectations. Delta Airlines also dropped after warning of increased competition and price cuts. Last week featured several measures of widening bullishness. For example, Yardeni Research raised its urine price target on the S and P 500 from 5400 to 5800. Oppenheimer went from 5500 to 5900. Yardeni cited uninvested cash in money market funds, and Oppenheimer pointed to strong earnings. FactSet crunched numbers based analyst price targets at the individual company level. They implied the S and P 500 could advance another 7% to 6,007 in the next 12 months, according to the research firm. The American Association of Individual Investors separately reported the highest reading of bullish sentiment since late March and the lowest level of bearishness since late February. Those points may suggest optimism is getting more commonplace. That could mean there's less potential for new money to enter the market and more risk of profit taking. And now let's chart the market. Most patterns on the S and P 500 appear potentially bullish, despite its extended move to the upside. First, it's made higher weekly highs and higher weekly lows for six straight weeks. That could be viewed as a longer term uptrend. Second, the advance decline line made a new high on Friday. It was the first new high since the index broke out on May 15. Trade station data also shows the number of new 52 week highs increasing. Are more stocks participating in the rally? Third, the Relative Strength Index, or RSI, has remained at or near overbought readings that resembles other periods of strong advances, like last November and December. Fourth, the index has remained in tight ranges without significant pullbacks. That's also potentially similar to late 2023. Other charts may support the bullish move in the S and P 500. For example, the yield on two-year treasury notes reflected rate cut optimism by falling to a three-month low. CBO's volatility index, or VIX, which rises at times of fear, is sitting at pre-pandemic lows. And now let's consider the week ahead, which has an unusual mix of political events, more earnings, and more commentary from the Fed. The housing sector features several reports. China's Communist Party begins its so-called third plenum today. The four-day meeting 
could potentially result in announcements about economic or financial stimulus. The Republican National Convention will also be underway in Milwaukee. Goldman Sachs reports earnings and Fed Chair Powell speaks at 12.30 Eastern Time. Tuesday brings retail sales and NIHB's Home Builder Sentiment Report, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and United Health issue quarterly results. Wednesday features housing starts, building permits, and crude oil inventories. Johnson & Johnson, ASML, and United Airlines are some of the noteworthy earnings. Thursday has results from the first major growth stock in the NASDAQ 100, Netflix. Initial jobless claims are also due. American Express, Schlumberger, Halliburton, Comerica, and Travelers are the big names Friday. Thanks for watching. Please visit TradeStation.com for more.